happened to you? Where are your parents? Um, your mother? Your father? He didn't wake up. Edward Scissorhands, the story of a lonely man with scissors for hands. There are countless things one could talk about when it comes to the stunning visuals of this cult classic, whether it be the unique costuming of our main man, Edward himself, or the pastel aesthetics of the suburban neighborhood the majority of the film takes place in. But what I'm here to talk about today is the lighting and how lighting choices added to the story. The film opens with a grandmother telling her granddaughter a bedtime story, and just by the lighting alone, we are able to feel the coziness emanating from this scene. The room is lit warmly with several points of motivated light through the lamps and even the flickering fireplace. By contrast, once the scene transitions into the story that the grandmother is telling, we are immediately enveloped in dark blue lighting as the camera pans over this mini set of the suburban neighborhood that the movie takes place in. Just like the scene before, it's nighttime and the lighting reflects that. The only difference in the lighting between the two is its warmth, or lack thereof. This stark difference serves as a visual representation of the emotional atmosphere of each setting. The first scene is supposed to feel homey and inviting, and this is accomplished by the warm tones of the lighting used. The second scene is meant to illustrate the coldness and isolation Edward feels while looking down at the town from his lonely castle. Quality of light is also something that is thoughtfully juxtaposed throughout this film. In all the exterior shots, the lighting is very hard and bright, as seen with all the sharp shadows that are cast. And in interior shots, the lighting is softer, which creates an interesting distinction between settings. But what this also does is make for some opportunities to create visual contrast, as seen in this moment where Kim is watching Edward hack at some plants. As she's still indoors, the lighting on her face is very soft, creating very gradual gradients from the lighter parts of her face to the shadows. Kim's feelings for Edwards at this point in the story have changed to be much more positive than they were when she initially met him, and this is shown by the lack of contrast that is created by the lighting. Edward, on the other hand, is outside, lit by harsh, bright daylight with high contrast between the lights and shadows. This is reflective of how intently focused he is on what he's doing and how upset he is of the entire situation with Kim's boyfriend, Jim. Lighting is also used in a way that subverts reality while still managing to not be entirely obvious about it. Most of the last 20 minutes or so of the movie take place at night, and yet we are able to entirely see everyone unobscured by shadows or low lighting. For example, in the scene where Kim walks outside to Edward snipping away at an ice sculpture, we see Edward and the sculpture with the entire shot being well lit right down to the ladder he's standing on. Now of course, logically, we know that the lighting is just coming from off screen, but within the universe of the film, it wouldn't make sense that this shot would be so bright. Sure, street lights exist, but he's standing in the middle of their backyard and I know for a fact that those tiny Christmas lights strung in the house are not that bright. Another scene where lighting is used in a way that isn't realistic is when Edward is running down the street towards the gates of the mansion. As he runs down this road, it's clear that it, there is only one street light at the end of the road. But despite that, the entire road is very well lit. If you look at the houses, you can see that there's a large source of light coming from behind the camera. And this is hard light because the shadows it's creating is very sharp and distinct. And if you look at the yellow car that's parked in the driveway, you can also see a bright reflection of the light as well. This again is showing that realistically, if this was taking place at night, you would not be able to see all of this. Especially because we see that the sky is absolutely pitch black. Realistically, there would need to be more streetlights than just the one at the very end. The shot that follows directly after this scene of Edward running down the road is also an example of lighting being used in an unrealistic way. As mentioned before, there is only one streetlight at the end of the road, and it's on the front side of the gate. But when we change to the later scene, with all the noisy neighbors gathered in the road in front of it, there appears to be a very bright light coming from behind the gate, as we can see by the bright halo of light around all of their heads. Truthfully, I think these inconsistencies in lighting were purposeful. I don't doubt that at all, that they were purposeful, creative choices, as by the time that Edward Scissorhands was being made, Tim Burton was already an established director, and the cinematography, Stefan Chapsky, had already worked on several films. These were purposeful choices made by them. 
I believe that these inconsistencies in lighting just add to the magic of the story. These subtle lighting choices were a way for them to twist reality in this fantasy film by putting light in places that shouldn't logically have light in order to make their movie more visually interesting. Because, of course, in a world where an old inventor can create a living man and give him scissors for hands, why would we expect such simple things as lighting to follow the rules that we have in our boring, non-scissor hands land universe? Thanks for watching me ramble for a bit about my favorite movie. I truly do love this film to bits. Um, if you have any suggestions for other movies I should visually analyze, feel free to leave them in the comments. And remember to subscribe if you enjoyed this video, as it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Thanks for watching! Have a good day, bye!